I spent a lot of my K through 12 years feeling different. I did everything I could to be the best at the violin as a way to sort of make my mark. So my name is Azinma, or Ezi. I am a violinist, composer, music educator. My dad is from Georgetown, Guyana. And then my mother is American, but her parents are German. I grew up in predominantly white communities. And as somebody who is mixed race, this was very challenging. I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. I went to school on a farm. And that's actually where I first fell in love with the violin. I was three years old. There was a violin program there, and some of my classmates had an instrument. And I begged my parents to play, and it took some convincing, but they finally caved in, and I was a natural. I just kept playing. I never, ever, ever stopped. You know, when I was in fifth grade, I auditioned for the orchestra, and I practiced so hard. I show up to the audition, play my heart out, then we get the results back the next week or whatever, and I'm sitting third chair. I was devastated. My dad once again explained, because of the way that people see you, you have to be that much better. You have to work that much harder. You can't make the same mistakes that these other kids get to make. So I went to the conductor of the orchestra the next day, and I told her, I think there's been a mistake. What can I do to fix this? I don't believe I should be sitting where I am. And she says, well, guess what? We have a challenge system. We can do a blind tape, tape A and tape B. We'll play it for the class, and they'll get to vote. I was like, all right, cool. So we do the tapes, they vote unanimously, I become second chair. We do the tapes again, and unanimously, I'm first chair. And I never left. I think for women and girls to be able to say, I work hard, I deserve this. And it's not from a place of arrogance, but it's more of a place of self-worth, right? That was a huge thing that I learned from this experience. My first touring gig was with Clean Bandit. I don't know how in this massive universe they found me, but they did. Next, I worked with Beyonce for three years, which was just so inspiring to work with such a badass in every single way. I've done one-offs with Stevie Wonder. That was amazing. The most incredible musician I've ever worked with. I love classical music so much. There's so many pieces that just speak to me in a way that other genres of music don't. I think with any greatness, whether if it's Michael Jordan or Beethoven or, or whatever it is that makes something great, we have to honor it. Understanding what makes a Mahler symphony great, I can then apply that to my own music. Knowing the history of where we've come is very important in knowing where I want to go as an artist. I would love to see more works by black artists, brown artists, women, to just bring more diversity because it exists into the classical space, into these classical record labels. That's something that I really want to continue to hopefully inspire and be a part of. So I started Heartstrings Academy in 2020. It is a nonprofit organization for children, uh, K through five. And the focus is to provide music education free of charge, instruments free of charge, access to concerts free of charge, to allow more people access into the classical space. You know, I think what we see in terms of diversity in the classical space isn't because of ability, it's because of opportunity, right? And if we can bring more opportunity to more people, then classical music will become more diverse. And I think for me, I just love music education and I'm so grateful for the mentors I've had in my life. Heartstrings is a way for me to pass the torch. For me, living life on my own terms is about authenticity, being 100% true to who I am, who I am as an artist, who I am as a person. That for me is living life on my own terms.